Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I start in the name of Allah, the all merciful, the ever merciful, and the everlasting curse be on the Satan and his followers. Allah's blessings and peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and upon his pure family. Our respected viewers, one of the Shia poets has written some verses of poetry describing the situation and the circumstance of Imam Hussein on the 10th of Muharram. And these are the verses I'm going to read out to you. All my followers, whenever you drink refreshing water, remember me. Or whenever you hear of a martyr or a lonely person, weep for me. I am the son of the Prophet of Islam, and I was martyred cruelly. And then my body was smashed intentionally by the hoofs of the enemy's horses. I wish you all were present. The Imam is addressing his Shia. I wish you all were present on the day of Ashura to see how I asked them for water to my infant, but they refused to quench him. I respect the viewers, peace and blessings be upon you and welcome to Imam Hussein. A series of episodes in which we talk about the different stages of Imam Hussein's life, starting from his miraculous birthday, talking about some of the events and stories happened to him during his holy life, mentioning some of the prophetic quotes in his right, and then ending up with his unmatchable martyrdom. My name is Hassan Hadi and I'm honored to be hosting this program. Our respective viewers, we have started talking about fitna and sedition in Kufa and we are still talking about the same topic yet more largely. Our respected viewers, yet Ibn Ziyad was neither as easily fooled nor as weak willed as his predecessor Al Nu'man bin Bashir. He proposed instead to hold Hani until he had handed over Ibn Aqil. However, Hani refused this outright and an argument ensued between the two until one of Hani's acquaintances pulled him aside and speaking privately urged him to comply with the governor's demand. There will be no shame or failure upon you, you in turning him over because you would only be handing him over to the authorities, this person said to Hani bin Urwa. Still Hani refused, saying by Allah, I will never hand Ibn Aqil over to him. Having heard this, Ibn Ziyad, Allah's curses be upon him, became enraged. He commanded Hani brought before him once again, where he issued a clear ultimatum, either bring Muslim bin Aqil to him or be executed. It is here, respected viewers, that Hani miscalculated. He believed that he was largely untouchable due to the protection of his tribe. Thus, he boldly told Ibn Ziyad that he would have to go through them to get to him. Ibn Ziyad, however, predictably did not respond well to this perceived insolence and beckoned Hani to come closer. No sooner did he approach him than Ibn Ziyad began beating him out the face with his stuff, breaking his nose and drenching his face and beard in blood. He continued beating Hani bin Urwa until his stuff altogether got broken. You have been behaving like a Kharijit all day, Ibn Ziyad screamed at him. And as much your blood is lawful to us, with that he ordered Hani removed from his presence and locked up. Rumors spread to the tribe of Hani that he had been killed, and indeed some of them did not march on the governor. However, once they were assured the Hani was very much alive and only imprisoned their crowds quickly dissipated. Kintan that he was well on his way to putting down and potential uprising, Ibn Ziyad ordered an assembly gathered where he ascended the member and warned the people against attempting to subvert the illegitimate government of the profligate sinner Yazid bin Muawiyah, the false governor. Yet our respected viewers, as he finished his speech, he had not even descended from the member when the call arose from the gates of the mosque, Muslim bin Aqil has come. Peace be upon you, master of martyrs, when you were born and when you were murdered and when you will be resurrected. Our respected viewers, this is the end of today's episode. Until we meet again, let's pray that Allah the Almighty hasten the reappearance of the master of our time to interpret the message of the grandfather, Imam al Hussein, who says, I only desire to spread good values and to prevent evil. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.